I'm here in the Natural History Museum with Paolo and can you tell us a bit more about yourself and the museum we have here? Yeah, I'm, uh, I've been here for just over a year, um, although I, I worked here well, over 10 years ago um, and it's such a fantastic place I had to come back. So went off to England, got about 10 years experience working in museums over there and then uh, finally an opportunity came back and you know, museums, it tends to be you know, dead men's shoes or retirement, so uh, it took a while before the opportunity came up. But I'm glad it did because this is a fantastic mm. collection. Um, it's, we have over two million specimens, uh, we have a lot of scientifically important material, and we've got this fantastic historic resource. So um, it's very much kind of a museum of a museum. Mm. Um, the building was actually completed in uh, 1857. Um, and that was to house the collections of the Royal Dublin Society at the time, which uh, started to be collected around 1792. So it's, it's quite a historic um, collection. We've got a lot of really cool old stuff. Hmm. Like for example, now, like what we have here is by the most striking kind of specimen when you come in the door. Yeah, the, uh, the Megaloceros, the uh, giant Irish deer, they are obviously um, the logical thing to have in the entrance to the Irish room. So mm. this is the ground floor of the museum and this is where we um, kind of have a representation of the species that you find in Ireland. Um, not just kind of currently, because obviously these guys aren't walking around now, um, but throughout time. So we have the giant Irish deer, we have hyenas, we have wolves, but more importantly we also have the things which you see today. Everything ranging from kind of just behind the giant Irish deer you can see We've got the fallow deer, which you can see in Phoenix Park easily, and there is this kind of spot. But we also have uh, other things. So we've got a vulture over um, yes. in the e eagle's case, because it was collected from cork, and therefore it represents mm. a species that was found in Ireland, even though it may not be native to it. Now, in terms of museums now, like, a lot of people, when they first hear about them, they think they just keep the animals they probably don't understand the significance of a museum. So what is the importance of having a collection like this? Well, there are two main kind of, kind of routes for the museum to, to kind of have importance. So number one would be uh, the public engagement side of things. So we have all the stuff in here so people can recognise the species that are around. So, of course, this was founded before people had you know, readily available books. You know, they weren't cheap, they were very expensive to produce pictures before TV, before you know, great wildlife documentaries with David Attenborough and people like that doing cool things. Uh, all, all of that sort of stuff on the internet in particular, none of that stuff existed when this building was put together and these collections were put on display. And so there was a really important role for showing specimens of animals just for people to be able to identify these things, to recognise what was around them. And also to show things from the rest of the world to give you an idea of the diversity of life to actually you know, allow people to understand that the world isn't just what you can see on your doorstep. It's this incredible huge place with all sorts of weird and wonderful things in it. So really that's what the museum was there for. And although some of that role has changed over time as you get things like wildlife documentaries which can show behaviour and so on, what you, what you always lack from, from seeing things on a TV or on a computer is um, you don't get a sense of scale. You don't get a sense of, of the tangible nature of, of the, the physical creature. And you do get that from museum specimens. Um, and you know, that's one of the reasons why it's, it's quite remarkable to have the collections here for people to see. The other side is the scientific side. Um, and that's really what, what kind of our most important side of things is. Because without having scientific specimens from the past, it's very hard to understand the diversity of life in the future and also to get a grasp of what we've got. So um, one of the most important things we hold in museums are type specimens. And a type specimen is where you get um, a scientist who will go out into the field, they'll collect a, a new species of something, could be anything. Um, and if it's never been described before, and if no one's ever seen one before, then you need to be able to say, well, this is what one of these things looks like. And so what you do is you preserve a specimen um, and that specimen then sits in a museum and any researcher, any scientist who wants to do any work on maybe identifying a new species, they need to be able to compare it to the existing species which are similar to get an idea of whether it's the same species or something new. So that's where um, scientific names come from. They get assigned to those individual specimens and the descriptions of those specimens in the scientific literature um, and that's really what sets that species in stone. It makes it a real thing. Mm. And without it being a real thing, 
you can't have things like conservation, you can't have um, legislation being written without having a species to refer to because you need to know what it is. Mm. Um, and then the secondary kind of aspect to that is taxonomy, um, understanding how things are all related to each other and then giving them kind of updated names to reflect that. Um, that's, that's an ongoing scientific process and that's really important as well because that not only helps you understand you know, the place of things in, in the world, but also um, allows us to make a better use of you know, our understanding of biology. So you know, if you know something's closely related to something else, you might find that they share similar, say for example, um, you know, uh, medicinal properties if you're using it for that sort of thing. So it gives you an idea of you know, areas to explore in the future for, for more research. So you know, the collection as a whole is, is very heavily used. We have you know, more than one inquiry a day, just constant drip feed of people coming in, and some of them are doing huge amounts of really cool research.